Welcome to the Rowdy Studio. I am Buzz Cutler. Bass Masters is on the end and smack dab in the middle. Bob Pockris from SceneDaily.com. Now, Bob, it is official. We've known for a while, but it's been made official. Brian, Patty, Clint Boyer together again for the very first time at Michael Waltrip Racing. Brian, Patty told you their okay. goal next season, three wins, make the chase, be a contender. And Clint Boyer told you... The expectations, no different than they were at RCR. These guys are smoking the drapes, right? Which drapes? The RCR drapes <laughs> or the Michael Waltrip drapes? Either, Either drape will do. Okay, uh, here's what I say. I say they can contend for the chase because when I look at it, at Michael Waltrip Racing, Rudiman contended. Martin Truex Jr. was close enough where you say, you say he at least He's flirted, in the mix. right? He flirted. So He's very flirty. You got Clint Boyer, guy who's won more races, Brian Patty, a lot of respect in garage. I say they could contend for a chase spot. The reasonable expectation uh, to answer your question is no different than I've ever had to continue to win races and make the chase and have a shot at that championship. Three wins, whew, that's, that'd be tough. That'd be I, tough. I, you know, I mean, you're talking about an organization. Did Jimmy Johnson have three wins last year? No, and you're talking about an organization that has two wins in their history, right? Right, but so. on the other hand, Brad Keselowski, who saw three wins coming out of that guy, and Clint Boyer has a better pedigree than Keselowski did at this time last year. Yeah, and you've got... Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing, merging their engine departments. So could their engines be better? And we're ass assuming that Red Bull doesn't come back. You may have more Toyota resources going there towards Michael Waltrip Racing. But Clint Boyer has never been a big winner either. I mean, he's never won three right. races in a season in his career when he was at RCR. That's why it feels like a stretch. But what about Clint's notion that, you know, the cars are so closely controlled that they're basically the same and it's all about the people. And so you can kind of turn it around. Is that a legitimate point of view here on this thing? I think it's a little bit legitimate. But, you know, I think the, the thing that even though they're so close, you need to have new ideas. On, because as uh, Drew Blickensterfer has said when I talked to him last week, is that now that they've been in the COT for a while, that they're starting to find the areas that they can really manipulate. I so, see. so now you need to really concentrate on those areas and see if you can get stronger. So, you know, I think the good thing is they have Brian Patty, a guy from the outside with some new ideas. Right. You got Clint Boyer, a driver from the outside. You got Mark Martin, a driver from the outside. And yeah, you can't really forget about Mark Martin. Oh yeah, him. Oh yeah, him. So I would say that, you know, this is kind of. If, if Michael Waltrip Racing is going to be a team that can win it, that can make the chase, that can win three races, that can have the expectations of an RCR, this is the year they need to show it. Yeah, right. how important is this year to them? That's a really good question there. That really I damn asked. important. <laughs> 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 well, because it's Napa's contract year. I, yeah, it's Napa's contract year, big and Truex's contract year. Um, but and I think Napa's been so, so longly associated with them, but they obviously they want to see results. And so I, I think they want to see that organization winning, preferably Martin Truex Jr. But if not, at least so if the organization can show that Mark Martin can win right. or Clint Boyer can win, you know, then, they, then Napa has a decision to make, well, is our driver Martin Truex or do we go out and get somebody else now that we know that the organization can actually run up front consistently. Scott Miller also over there. What do you think he brings to the party? I think he brings a lot of confidence for uh, Clint Boyer because mm -hmm. Clint Boyer has worked with him before. And if he tells Clint Boyer something, he'll trust that Clint would, I, I would say inherently, either would trust it or distrust it, depending on what he said right. from what he... So he's got a working relationship exactly. already. Exactly. You got to say this for Michael Waltrip. I mean, he's taken, he and Rob Kaufman have taken a huge swing at this coming season. I mean, they've made some major moves, and in some ways, it's like a make or break type of deal. I mean, come on. Well, Mark it's like, Martin, it's like when you go Miller. out and when you pick up a couple high priced free agents, you're making a statement that, okay, we are ready to contend now. That's what that kind of, you know, if you're still in the building process, you don't go out and pick up a bunch of high-priced free agents. When you reach out and you hire Mark Martin, you hire Clint Boyer, you hire Brian Patty, you hire Scott Miller, these are all guys we already know about. And you bring them into to this organization, you're saying, we're ready to contend now. We're ready to win some races here. We're ready to do something. We're ready to make some noise. And I think that is now the burden that they have. Well, and it also says that they're feeling the pressure, I think. Well, I mean, I think... I think the expectations change from when you're first year of a program to a fifth year of the right. program. I, I mean, at some point you have to take that next step, and they're saying we've got to take it. We're ready to take it now. 
Exactly. Fair? I would say that's fair. So are they going to take it? Will next season be different at Michael Walter Bracing? Bottom line. Well, I, I think it'll be different. I, I, I think they'll have a better year than what they had this year, but that's not saying a whole lot, right? <laughs> yeah. This year so, was a big step back. So yeah. I, I see them getting back to where they were in like 2009 and 2010. Flirting with the change. Yeah, whether they actually get Maybe over Maybe picking the, up a win. Yeah. Maybe two. Whether, I think Mark Martin will tell a lot because I still think, you know, mm-hmm. even though he had, didn't win the last two years, I still think Mark Martin's pretty good. Yeah. Still yeah. think he has it in him. And I think he'll be able to give a good evaluation, and Clint Boyer as well, of kind of where they're at. And are they going to be a team that, uh, that just flirts with everything and, but never seems to get it done? Or right. are they a team that can, you know, finally take some checkered flags on a more consistent basis? There you have it. All right. For the flirty Bob Pockris and Bass Masters, I'm Buzz Cutler. Thanks for watching. You know, Bob's going to London to propose. Did you know that? He's going to pop the question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He and Dale Jr. both getting engaged. At the same, I think no, they coordinated wow. it. It's are like you guys going to have like a double wedding? Joint announcement. Right, Bob? Yeah. I can tell you that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy.com. <laughs> Say it like it is. Say what like it is? <laughs> Rowdy.com.